Good morning everyone. So it is Christmas Eve and I'm gonna uh, Dot's just gone out to go and run some errands and I'm gonna do a bit of work a new workbench. So I've just been doing some little drawings and things obviously just uh, rough sketches and we're gonna go with something like this for the windows uh, copying a friend of mine Simon Dale he came up with a window that just looked kind of like this and I really liked it because it's great because it, it gives a natural curvy look to a square window without having to cut too much of the window out um, so we're going to make something like this I'm going to do it mostly from just my mind's eye um, so yeah no measurements or anything we're just going to make it around the window let's get to it so these are the two windows we're going to use they've got like a reflective coating on them um, I didn't choose that these are brand new these windows I paid nothing for them they were like missized or misordered or whatever and uh, weren't going to be used on a project so I got a pile of them let's say brand new seals all intact reflective UV coating on them and uh, paid nothing so yeah these are what we're going to use so I'm going to start cutting some bits of wood and planing the thickness in and uh, we'll start building something around here it's going to be a lot of work Right, these are our bits of wood we're going to use. They've got the length on them we need so we get them plain and thicknessed and everything else. Obviously it's all going to get shaped and everything but this is our starting point. Right, let's uh, get to work. Alright, they're all planed up. Now I'm going to put that planed on three faces, then use table saw to do the final face. to uh, cut these in half down the middle because I'm going to be re so I'm going to be, sorry, I'm going to be making this in two halves so uh, and the windows are sandwiched between it so we cut these down the middle Right, so I think this is how I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to half lap laminate it. Um, I was going to have them like uh, this sort of thickness and uh, mortise and tenon them. But the trouble is, is that I want to put you know, a, quite a bit of shape to these and curves and things. And I, if I have a mortise and tenon in there, you know, I'm going to have to be, be quite careful to avoid that if, when I'm putting shapes and stuff in it. Um, but if I uh, if I do it in you know laminated half laps, so I can have like you know something going there, and then another piece over there like that, then you know that piece in there like that, you know we end up with essentially a big tenon. This becomes like a big tenon, but um, but if I cut into this and shape it and stuff it's not going to cause any problems, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I need to mill a load more wood though to do that. So. Right, that is how we're going to do it. Um, so yeah, we're going to go glue laminate it and um, having, we could have had the wood that thickness, mortise and tenoned each one, but I think this is actually going to be more stable, better and quicker for what I've got to do. So we'll do it like that 
and uh, it's going to be two sides and the window sandwiched between the two and the window is going to be able to slide in and be changed from the top if need be. Okay, this had a few days to dry. Yesterday was a uh, New Year's Eve, had some friends over. Uh, sorry, New Year's Day yesterday, and uh, it's a bit hungover, so got a bit more drying time than expected. Uh, but yeah, let's get all this stuff off and have a look. So uh, there's the first one, first frame. Just needs cleaning up. Just got the second one here clamped up. So we'll let that dry for at least a day. It's quite cold. Used epoxy this time, having trouble with. Um, glue not sticking because of uh, the slight dampness in here and in the wood and also because of the fact that it's uh, such a dense uh, slightly oily hardwood so I've gone to an epoxy now hopefully that will give me a better, better joins. It's taken me quite a while to get to this point because uh, just cold weather glue drying times have made it kind of difficult just waiting on it. Right, it's time to do some creation. So I'm going to use this uh, tin here because it's got quite a nice radius on it. Line that up with that corner like that. Sort of try and get it pretty equal. And then put in radius join up those extremes of that something like that Right, let's get the old uh, plane of thickness of fired up. Still using the drill at the minute. Diagonals, they should be the same thickness as this, pretty close to. So um, now I can figure out how these are going to attach, where they're going to attach. So I'll leave this wood so I can curve it in so it looks like it's growing out of it. And I'll decide how much, how thick, and so on. So I'm going to shape this now to what I want it to look like. Right then, I think I've got some rough shapes. It's very difficult to film this because it's such a sort of creative process. So if you're filming something, you feel like you need to rush, so it's really difficult. Um, so I'll just show you as best as I can as I'm doing it. So this will be inlaid in here, but I'm just going to cut out this just to get closer to where I'm going to be. And then I can start figuring out the shaping a little bit better. So I'm going to mark these. Very 
very defined line. Right, put a few more cuts in it. Be nice to just cut the whole thing out on the uh, on the miter saw, but it's uh, because of its shape, it's hard to hold it. So I think this is going to be the the technique, but it's very very unpredictable wood. Okay, so that's sitting in there quite good. So basically we're doing a half lap, so that's that's sorted ready for that. So I can uh, make, I need to replicate this because there's gonna be one on each side of the window. So I can make the other one of them ready because I've got that as a pattern before I stick it or anything. Very pleased with how this is coming along. I've got my second uh, curvy bit done, laid out. So, and I've got them marked up, so I'm gonna jigsaw out these other bits, these curves, here's my curves, jigsaw them out, we leave a bit for this to lay into, so under there that gets left, and that gets laid into there, and same on the other side, and we'll just, uh, we'll have one half done then. You're a little workshop kitty. Hello. There's sawdust between the toes. Oh yeah, I know how that feels, girl. I know. Right, cover your ears. We've got to cut this. Okay, not a bad fit. Could be better. Little gap there. Do a little bit of final fitting. But yeah, not bad. Morning, everyone. So I'm just tracing, transferring these lines to uh, to this other frame. So we'll copy it so they match. Now I jigsaw these out. I had a really annoying day yesterday. Woke up in the morning and uh, found that no power coming out the hydro. Checked everything. Went over everything. Power cut the turbine's fine, you know, power coming out of the turbine, everything gets to the charge controller. The charge controller sees the voltage, everything working fine as it should, and uh, but it just doesn't pull any any current. So uh, I've got no hydro, which is why you probably hear a generator in the background. So uh, once I get, I've contacted the people that manufacture it ask them if they got any ideas I'll probably have to send it back but once I get a confirmation you know and I can take it all apart and I can put a spare one I've got it doesn't work as well but I've got a spare one and I can put that on uh, on the hydro and at least get a bit out of the hydro because I am gutted about running the generator that is not what I do here so yeah um, yeah that's what you can hear in the background Splinters. Right, there's the two pieces together. As you can see, it's going to be a, a fat window. Like it's going to be thick because the window's in between them still. So, hefty window. It's unconventional as well. I mean, normally you'd make the window and then lay the window in from one side, but 
uh, because I'm doing it curved and everything, if I did that, I'd have a square window one side and the curves on the other. And because I'm putting these bits in, I wouldn't be able to actually fit the window in from the back. Uh, so I'm making it in two halves, sandwiching the window, because then I can get these nice curves on both sides. But what I've done is, um, because these are, are going to be sitting inside some, some routed out holes, or at least chiseled out holes, <coughs> obviously that, they're, they're in some holes where the grain and the wood is going to shrink within that hole and, and I really don't want it to do that because it will leave gaps and also it's going to tear the, uh, the glue out a bit. It doesn't matter everywhere else because we've got different opposing grains overlapping each other so they can expand and contract in different ways so it's not going to be such a problem but in this it's only going to shrink really in the one direction and pull it apart a bit. So what I've done is I've left these uh, in the house for a couple of days now and you see they're starting to split a little bit and check and that's because they're drying out. So these are now drier than this piece of wood. Sort of green woodworking techniques. Um, so I'm going to put these now in, in, this, in this hole and make them as tight as I can. And then as everything shrinks, it should bind it together. We shouldn't get too many gaps. Right, so with a nice sharp knife, I'm going to hold butt these up tight to where I want them. Pull and hopefully mark nice, crisp, perfectly sized lines. So yeah, now we've got these lines, first thing we'll do is we'll come along and chip out into them. This is a Paul Sellers technique. Fantastic way of getting uh, crisp lines. He's a far, far better woodworker than I am. Handed that most of that out. Now it'd be easier to we'll just finish off the rest of the with the chisel. It really prefers to be cut this stuff. It's quite nice if you cut it. This is sharp too, this chisel, like it's proper sharp, it's shaving sharp. You can see it cutting through that end grain. Okay, I've been messing around with this for a bit. I think I'm pretty happy with the fit. Um, it could do with a tiny bit off of, uh, off of there still maybe, but yeah, I might do a tiny little trim, but got a couple of gaps here and there. But I think I'm happy with that. For the complexity of it, with all the curves and everything, I think it ain't too bad. We'll get some glue in there. Oh, falling over. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, joints are done. Um, we've got a few little gaps here and there, but nothing too major. This is the back. The front actually looks slightly better. But, like I say, this wood's damp. It's going to move anyway, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I might just fiddle with this one a bit, get it slightly closer in there. In fact, yeah, we'll just a little touch off there and we'll squeeze it a little bit tight. All right, let's get this glued up. Glue joints are prepared. Roughed up. The other glue from laminating them is taken off. I've got some epoxy here with some sawdust mixed into it. Sawdust there for uh, any gap filling. Okay, we're all clamped up. I'm very pleased actually, so I'm just going to leave that now because 
the age old saying is true, you can never have enough clamps and I barely had enough to do that, I certainly don't have enough to do the other one so we'll leave that now. Okay, morning everyone, it's a new day, just giving these a quick sand up. Now I've, uh, I've made a bit of an error, which is to be expected really. Um, let me explain what I've done. On the other side of here, this is the side that I wanted to show because it's the side with the least joinery. Um, but I ended up with a, there's a pocket of rot in one of these pieces, and I meant to put that on the other side, um, but I didn't. So I was going to just have that pocket of rot on the outside and have the joinery facing the right way, the way I planned. But I thought, mm, don't really want a pocket of rot. I'd rather have the pocket of rot sandwiched in the middle where it's not a problem. It's not rotting, it's just a, a pocket where water has obviously got in. Uh, but yeah, I decided I'm just going to have... So this is going to be one side, and on the other side it will be... We won't be showing this joinery. It's a bit annoying because I didn't spend as much time on this because it was going to be a sandwich, but now this is going to be the front face. And also I wanted to uh, not have these bits showing because these might shrink a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, like I say... <laughs> made a mistake it's because everything because there's two parts of it with two different braces and they're handed and somewhere along the line I've uh, got myself mixed up it wouldn't have been such a problem if it wasn't for that pocket of rot um, that I'd like to uh, cover up but never mind just giving them a rough sand and we'll um, we'll carry on <laughs> So here is uh, here's the thing. What was meant to happen was uh, was there supposed to be a pose. So um, this is now on the outside, and this this side was going to be on the in uh, sandwiched. Um, but because of that pocket of rot in there, and just this is a nicer side, I'm going to put this on. This is going to be the outside piece. The only reason I wanted to do it that way around really is because of this grain direction here. This could shrink and open up gaps here. Um, but if it's on the outside, it's going to get damp anyway, so um, so it might be alright. Might not change in much content too much. So I'm going to join these two pieces together on the corners, oh, sorry, on the edges, because I know that on the edges um, they're going to be fixed in some beading anyway. So yeah, we'll join them like that. <laughs> Trying to create organic looking things. Organic looking things aren't usually too neat. We want to make the curves flow nicely. The trouble is grain direction. This wood really likes to only be worked. Even if your tool's really sharp, it'll only cut if you're perfectly on the right grain direction. So, uh, this is kind of challenging, just uh, using a rasp to uh, do the uh, long process of shaping this. Shaping all these corners and some edges. shaping and sanding done. Put a nice round over on all these corners with the router. So I just go around the whole thing. I'm climb cutting it because the this wood just prefers it you get a nicer finish. It's a bit dodgy. Router wants to jump on me but it's uh, you get a nicer finish so I'm gonna climb cut it.
Now that is looking really, really nice. Check out what just happened. There's a little, uh, little chip out of the side here that was hidden, but the router bit followed it. Cut a big chunk out of it. That's annoying. Fortunately, it kind of looks like quite a nice natural sort of thing in the wood. So yeah, oh, I'm gonna have to do something with that. It's annoying. Right, I've got it filled in. Hopefully it just looked like a bit of a, like a knot that I've filled with resin. Really annoying. Should have checked to make sure this route bit had a clean path to follow. <sighs> what a div. Never mind. Carry on. There we go. Done a repair on it. Could be a lot worse. I mean, it'll stand out worse when it's got oil on it, but nothing I can do about it really at this point other than cut a load of it out. Pretty gutted about it. There's a little little uh, hollow there where a chip had come out, where it's obviously uh, reclaimed wood and the router followed it, dug in. How nice does that look, eh? I've just got this uh, drill, drum sander thing. So just put it in. So we're going to leave it there for today, sand it up ready to uh, fit the glass. So a uh, bit annoyed about that little uh, ding out of it, but it's not too bad. This is going to be the bit on the inside, so this is the side on the inside, the outside bit. We won't see that often, so yeah. Never mind, we'll carry on tomorrow, tomorrow mount the glass and uh, maybe fit it, but it's going to be really heavy, so I'm not sure about that just yet. Right, good morning everyone. Back at this, last day of it I think. So I've just uh, cut these strips on the table saw. I used a softwood because I want the uh, glass butted up to something nice and soft. So uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy. I might spin the glass round because I think I've put it in the wrong way around. There's a ref two different reflective sides I think. I'll check that. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty, pretty pleased, I think. Okay, just screwing this together now. I could plug these but there's no need because they're going to get covered by the uh, trim that holds it into the frame. And we're done. So, uh, I think that, you know, this here, seeing as the window is so deeply sunk, um, if this got blasted with rain, there'd obviously be a, a moisture problem here. But because it's in a roof that's got such a massive overhang, I don't think that'll be an issue. However, if I was to get like condensation or something dripping down here, and it does start to accumulate down here, I'll have to um, do something about that. Uh, either make this more sloped or drill some drainage holes or something like that um, but we'll see I don't I don't want to do that if I don't have to so and it won't be a big deal to uh, take it out um, once in it's not gonna be stuck in or anything it should be screwed in so we'll see it's a bit of an experiment Let's see how it works I just ripped up all these um, these are the trims around the edges, put a nice uh, round over on them, gonna mitre them in, um, and they're fixed just with screws into the frame. Right, let's go and fit, get ready, and then uh, I'm gonna have Doc come and help me lift it in. It's not too heavy, it's just uh, awkward, but I'm gonna get all this ready so I can slot it in. So we just uh, fitting these trims, mitered them into the corners, and uh, just uh, screwing them in from the top there, like that, and then the window will lean against there, and then be another set of these sandwiching it the other side. Thought I'd just give you a quick view of it before we put it in with the glass in. So it's got a reflective glass in it, as you can see. So see the reflection of the roof there in it, looks quite cool. So yeah, it turned out very well, very pleased and you can hardly see the little mistakes in it. 
yeah, anyway, let's uh, get it installed. Morning everyone, so I decided I'm going to put a bit of uh, linseed oil on this just to seal it. Um, definitely on the outside, we'll see about on the inside. Also, it's just a lovely part of making something. We need to oil it. Okay, there it is with some finish on it. How nice does that look? Just beautiful wood. And this is made from sleepers. Okay, I don't know if I said that in the video. This is made from 100 year old railway sleepers. Reclaimed. Tip it back the way we had it. I like it. And rest it on there. How's that stuff? You're gonna have to hold it strong though, you know? Push that corner in please. Oh my god. Right. I'm gonna push this end round a bit. in. That was horrible doing that. It's very heavy. The frame wasn't quite square as you can see there which I didn't account for and chipped the plaster trying to only just fit. Should have given it a bit more space. But it's in. It's done. It's in. Uh, so Dot's gonna oil it from the inside. I'm gonna finish making the last bits of trim that hold it in there. It's done. And there it is, all done. I'm really pleased. It turned out great. Uh, very proud of that. And uh, I enjoyed it too. So we're gonna get back to doing some grunt work now. Gonna plaster uh, this wall over here next. Just turn down this brightness a bit. We're gonna plaster that wall, get back to doing some grunt work, and then we shall do that window which is a window that opens. So this one's gonna open, that one's fixed, that one's gonna open. Right, show you from the outside, and that'll be the end. And here it is from the outside. The sun's kind of uh, blocking my view at the minute. Yeah, reflective glass. Well, I think I like it. I'm not 100% not sure about the reflective glass. I think it probably would have been slightly nicer without reflection, wouldn't it? But, I like it. Two weeks work in that, everyone. So, uh, would really help me out if you uh, liked and subscribed and all that good stuff. Because, yeah, I've put two weeks work into this video. Alright, that's going to be the end of it. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. Oh, uh, yeah, one more thing before I go. Total cost £20. Three quarters of a sleeper went into it. That's it. A few screws. 20 quid that cost, glass was free, reclaimed, 20 quid.